The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the February 17th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. We need to make that one little two by four shift. Well, it means we can find the gift. In every set of circumstance, that life is going to toss at us. And today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, hey, we've got you covered there, too. Let those fingers do the walking. Go ahead, send me an email, send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tigers den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Less Show. We begin the show with all the U.S. indices trading to the downside. Dow's off 386, S&P's down 56, NASDAQ 259, Russell 30, Semi 79, Tranny's 186, you got the spot volatilix up at two bucks, trading out at twenty six thirty one. Gold is up thirty dollars, nineteen hundred point seventy. Silver's up twenty three pennies. She's trading out at twenty three eighty three. Lights recruit back two fifty four. Trading out at eighty nine thirty. And the thirty year treasury up twenty six ticks. That's trading out at one fifty one twenty one. Dollar wise, leading to the upside, you've got Inspirito, Inspirito Corporation. Yeah, total up. Maybe it's an IPO up four hundred ninety three percent. Four hundred ninety three percent. That's a big move. Is an IPO? Let me see here real quick. Oh, yeah, does, does certainly looks that way. Um, or reverse merger. But in any event, you've got the Equinix is up 21 bucks, 3%. Massimo Corp, 15 bucks, 10%. Vistion Corp is up uh, 13%, 14 buckaroonies out there. To the downside, it's Mercado Libre leading the charge, 77 bucks, nearly 7%. Google's off 64, a little over 2%. Shopify, 58, nearly 8%. Booking Holdings, 57, or 2%. Chipotle down 3.5%, or 56 buckaroonies. Let's go to our first caller it's brent in martinez california brent thanks for calling thanks for holding how are you today i'm uh, doing quite well steve how are you excellent thanks so much for calling always good to hear your voice and well, was it yesterday we spoke about uh, walmart i can't recall if it was yesterday or the day i before. sent you uh, an email and I, I appreciate your assessment of that and that's kind of one it. of the reasons i'm calling i decided to instead of buying in before the the, the earnings report i just wait till they came out this morning Okay. I was watching it pre-market. I saw it was up around, you know, the, it was positive, so it was, you know, of course, moving around. But saw it get up as high as 138 and decided to, you know, to see what it, where it opened at. And it didn't open up that much, honestly. As it were getting right. close to the open. Right. It started right. to drift down. It was even a little negative. It did open around, you know, roughly where it, where it closed uh, yesterday. Yes. And so I got in around 134. And I just, uh, it looked like to me, area that's going to be pretty critical to get above and stay above would be that uh, midpoint on the daily profiles there and then because if it did get there and hold there that would get it back in that consolidation zone and yes. above the low you know the bottom of the weekly profile and the monthly profile and and kind of open the door to maybe you know the 140 area so i just want to get your thoughts on that yeah, so Brent, no doubt from a profile standpoint at the moment, price is above the bottom of the daily, weekly, and monthly profile. So you've got support that is held. Those ranges are 135.05, 136.41, and 134.17. 
You're inside a bullish structure daily profile, and any close above 137.26 would suggest that price should move up to the top of that profile. It's at the 142.78. You can see that price is up against a short-term descending trend line out there. Uh, price is trading just above that. So that would be the only other level of resistance that I see on the daily time frame. Um, any questions about this daily chart or any of these black background charts before I pull over the white ones for us? No, and I know that yesterday was bar nine, so then today would be, you know, given the bar that we're having so far, that would be pretty bullish. But, yeah, you can take a look at that on the white charts and see what you think. Yeah, very very, very bullish. There's no doubt about it. Uh, you know, we're just trying to figure out where's the next battle. That's really ongoing right now. It doesn't appear to be much of a battle. You've got, I think we mentioned yesterday there were a couple of different patterns that were out. There was a TD9 count and the Rhodes Mintum Indicator signal. So you've got the bullish reversal candle to confirm both of those patterns. Now, before price gets up to the top of that profile, there is TD, because it did form a TD9 count pattern, that generates a natural resistance level at 141. So the upside price target right now, unless that descending trend line holds coming into the end of the trading session, the upside target is between 141 and 142.78. If price can take out 142.78, then the next target would become 150.51. Any questions, Brent, about the daily chart? No, I think that's it, Steve, and really those numbers you just gave me, that's kind of, if I get up there, I'll probably be getting out. I don't have a ton of time. I have out to uh, the following Friday, so the 25th is when I, the ones I end up buying, and I have the 135s, I believe, so I have to go back a little bit. I think that's what I end up getting. Okay, okay. So the weekly chart, uh, the oscillator and change line changed colors uh, last week or the week before. And typically what we see is price will make a move up to that level. So that's the 141-ish area out here that price is going to change up and down as price moves up and down. So you've got one resistance, potential resistance at 141. If you clear that, the red oscillator and change line on a weekly basis, but still we've got 141 on the uh, daily, that TD9 count level. So uh, those are the areas to watch. Not that price can't get above them, but that's really where the it looks to me like the next battle inside of Walmart is. And real quickly on a 30-minute time frame, Brent, I don't see anything here to suggest that there's any kind of a top from a short-term standpoint. So 141.66 is its target. So that 141 keeps coming up no matter how we look at it, daily, weekly, and even on a 30-minute chart out there. So I do hope that helps you out. Is there anything else that I can do for you, Brent? Oh, it absolutely does. There's uh, some other ones I'm looking at to possibly do next week. So I might even call you tomorrow or, or even Monday or something to, to you know have you give your assessment and, and I kind of – to go, sure. you know, just so to have another person to bounce it off of nope, things no I'm problem. looking at. Yeah, so. Sure, no problem. So tomorrow I'm going to record the show from 8 to 9. So I know you're an early riser, typically. That's 5 o'clock in the morning for Brent, folks, out there. If you wanted to take a look at the instrument right now, I'm happy to do that for you. So it's all up to you. Yeah, I'll just, I'll probably try to talk to you in the morning. I'm sure I'll be okay. listening and looking for some potential trades. I'll probably be looking more at... The indices tomorrow, are we going to get some kind of bounce going into the weekend or are we just going to keep, you know, the, the downward trend? So that's, you know, hopefully you can. I know you always do. We'll look at. You well, know, I, look, Brent, look. I would I would just prefer that you call in with the answer to that question for me tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that sounds good, Steve. I'll, okay, I'll good. try to give you a call in the morning. We'll look at some of the shorter term things and see if there's any bottoming you know, signals okay. coming in that, uh, for a potential trade for tomorrow. Sounds great. Always great right, to hear from care. you. Thanks so much for calling you. But that was Brent de Martinez, California. We get back for this break. We've got some questions that have come in by email. Nat, uh, ticker symbol NAT, Nordic American Tankers, uh, the SMHs, and Roku. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago. And the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com 
TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Let's go out to Denver, Colorado and speak with Ron. Ron, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Great, Steve. It was uh, four, and now it's warmed up to 25. I anyway, love it. Uh, I, like I want to thank you, that, Brent, and that, yourself for your comments on Walmart yesterday. I sold some puts that expire tomorrow, okay. and I sold some yesterday, and then I sold some more this morning. And so I think uh, that looks like they're going to give me a little income and expire okay. worthless. Okay. So I, okay. I want to say thank you on that. You're welcome. But I, I was just looking at a stock. It's a, a solar energy storage company, kind of like Tesla, and it's called uh, uh, Flank uh, Fluence Energy. Yes. And uh, a couple of months ago, this stock was around 38, and Goldman Sachs recommended it and said it was going to go to 54 target. Well, the last couple of months, it's fallen out of bed. It's about 13 and a half now, but there's been four insider buys. And I just wondered, should I get in bed with the insiders on a long-term call? How does it look technically, FLNC? Yeah, so uh, because this has only been trading since about uh, October of 2021 out here, we have really limited data. The only profile data that we have is from the daily time frame chart, and the bottom of that profile was 1571. And as you pointed out, we're trading below that. We're at 1337 right now. So the real question on FLNC, that's the ticker symbol, folks, is, you know, does it have a bottoming pattern? And the answer is it could if it generated a bullish reversal candle. So it's triggered a road momentum indicator signal. And if it uh, does generate a bullish reversal candle, then that would be your trigger into the trade. Now, what price is going to really have to do in order for a long-term call position to pay off is you must see a close above 1713. 1713 is the top of the profile. It was tested uh, maybe last week, early last week out there, and that's acted as resistance. So you know where the real sellers are at. If the sellers can overtake that area, then it's got some promise. That promise would take you up to 2474. That's a TD9 count breakdown resistance level. 
Uh, but should you get into it right at this very second on a weekly chart? Again, we have limited data out here. Uh, but as I take a look at this chart, I don't have any kind of a bottom signal to suggest from that standpoint. The 30-minute chart does show a bottom that formed out here. It was wave number seven. It was letter G. It was at 2.30 in the afternoon. It was on uh, uh, Valentine's Day on Monday out here. We ha are starting to see a little bit of higher highs and higher lows. The question is, will 1329 hold? Now, this is a 30-minute chart. Ron, at 1329 is the bottom of its bullish structure profile for that time frame. If it does hold, and then we go on and make another higher high out here, then at least on, an in, on, a, on a very short-term basis, you're getting the type of signals you'd like. We may not have that confirmation on the daily, whereas if 1329 fails, price probably falls back to 1260. That's a breakout level for the 30-minute time frame. And then I would come back and I'd say, you know what, I think you need to wait for a bullish reversal candle on the daily time frame because you said the key word, you're looking for a longer-term type of investment out here. Is that correct? Yeah, well, the longer term for me is two or three months. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so because it's two or three months, I'd, I'd prefer to wait for, for at least a confirmed bottoming pattern, and you just don't have that for FLNC. So Goldman Sachs got it wrong, at least at this stage out here. I'd suggest you continue to watch it, call in anytime you want. But if you do see some type of bullish reversal candle, and that may be the trigger, knowing that you've got a battle at 1713, you clear that, then you're off to the 2474 uh, level. Is there anything Super. else I can... Thank anything you very, else very I can much help you for with your time. Ron? Appreciate oh, it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hey, Ron, thanks so much for calling and have a great day. That was Ron in uh, Denver. Uh, so let's get to a uh, couple of questions. One came in from the Tigers. Now, let me get to that here first so that I don't forget. I believe that was to take a look at McDonald's, if I'm not mistaken. So actually, I'm going to get McDonald's charts up on our black background screens out here. I think it was just to look at it. So McDonald's right now is trading below the bottom of its weekly profile, above the top of its monthly profile. That takes us to the daily time frame. And the daily time frame suggests that price should go target. 248.49, the bottom of that daily profile. Now, the swing point out here is from January 27th. They did 5.2 million shares. Today, so far, you're pulling back with 995,000 shares. So it's pulling back into that swing point on much lighter volume. If it were to close above, 252.46, your 252.39 today on that letter volume, you'd have a rejection of that swing point. Now, that rejection of the swing point says, okay, I go up and try to take out those sellers again. We know this is a bearish structured profile, and the sellers reside between 256.99 and 259.82. So that's what the daily time frame, which is really the one that's controlling, I think, uh, what, uh, what price is doing at this stage here. Uh, if we look at the uh, the daily chart, you've got a bar number eight that should form today. Now, and I apologize, whoever asked for this in the den, you will not get a TD9 count unless tomorrow there is a close below 253.39. So you're not looking to get a whole lot of movement out here to, in order to generate a bottoming pattern out there. That doesn't mean that it's not going to, even if it does generate the bottoming pattern, that it doesn't uh, run into resistance at 256 to 259 out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at the daily chart for McDonald's. The weekly chart uh, doesn't help me out a whole lot. The monthly chart... You know, just starting to trade below that oscillator and change line. Um, so how do we leave this here? You know, it's pulling back into a swing point. If it closes inside that swing point, it suggests 248.49. Uh, you might just have a consolidation-oriented pattern that is uh, setting up here for McDonald's. But it does not look like it's getting ready to bust out the lows. It looks like it's getting ready to put in a short-term bottom. So I do hope yeah, that helps out whoever uh, had requested that inside the Tiger's Den. I don't think there's anything else in the Tiger's Den, so let me get to the email request. The first one coming in from uh, JT in New York. JT wants to have another look at Nordic American tankers. He's a holder of this and is asking whether or not he should add to that position. So when we take a look at Nordic American tankers. You've got the uh, bullish. Well, you've got what well, it, it's. You've got a wide ranging bar today, pretty decent volume, but still right now JT price is just consolidating with inside that daily profile, and it's running that little descending trend line. So would I ask? Would I would I suggest that you add to your position right here right now? The answer is no. Because price hasn't taken out resistance. In fact, you would need two days above it. But because it hasn't taken out, maybe this will pull back. So if you're going to add to your position, then those levels might be 145, the bottom of the daily profile, 154, the center of the profile. Let's look at the white background chart, see if there's any other information. The other information is 143 on the daily chart. 
That's the oscillator and change line. If price does close above that descending trend line and the top of this bear structure profile, then you'd be looking for run up to 184. Now, on the intraday charts out here, I've got a TD nine count. So there's not a lot of activity inside of Nordic American tankers, but you do have a topping pattern out here, the TD nine count. And this suggests at least a pull back to the 155 low. That's only four pennies, so not looking like it would fall off. If it price got below 155 JT, then you'd be looking at 147. I don't know if the intraday charts are gonna help us out a ton because of the volume or lack of volume inside this instrument. Um, so right now, it's, it really depends upon the close and uh, and whether or not, you know, so, so to be really clear here, I think you'd be better off, you're already in the position, um, you'd be better off to wait to try to buy this on a uh, retracement. But even then, if it closed below 159 today, you know what you've got is just a consolidation, basically, between 159 and about 140. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We'll go take a look at the SMHs, Roku. Uh, NVIDIA. And of course, I'd love to hear from you folks. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Let's go out to Sarasota and speak with Ray. Ray, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing well, Steve. Hope you are as well. 
So. I am. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for asking. And uh, we're going to take a look at uh, one of your favorite uh, stocks, I suppose, AUI, Yamana Gold. Tell me what you're doing, how yeah. I can best help you. Uh, I, I have a investment position in it. I, I trade the stock also. It's been in a consolidation for about seven months. I've sold my trading position, but I've got my core position. Okay. And uh, I'm trying to figure out uh, if you can get back up to that $7 level. Uh, it was there about a year and a half ago. Yeah. Okay. So let's take a look at uh, Yamada Gold, see what's going on right now. Now, you've got nice volume in it today, 18 million shares as it takes out a, a daily swing point from August the 4th, which had 16 million shares. So you've got nice movement in it. Uh, I'm going to pull over the white background. Well, you're trading above the top of the weekly profile. That's 466, 462. Uh, you're above the daily profile. So from a profile standpoint, the next level of resistance, next battleground area for Yamana Gold is going to be 510. Ray, if it can clear 510, get through that, then it's going to suggest to move up to 606. So I know you want to get to that $7 mark, but right now those would be the longer-term battles that you would be dealing with, and that's coming from the monthly time frame chart. As I open up the white background charts, today is going to form bar number 8 of a TD9 count. That suggests, and it's also wave number seven, letter G, that suggests that we could see a short-term top form sometime between today and uh, Monday. That's with regard to the TD9 count. If you get a lower high tomorrow, that would confirm that seventh wave move. But, you know, the, the movement that we're seeing out here in the miners, uh, Ray, what percentage do you think the movement is based upon what's going on in Ukraine versus something else? Oh, that's a hard call. Uh, I I think it's uh, it is being impacted by that. Uh, I would think that there's a potential that if if Ukraine is no longer an issue, we could see gold uh, drop maybe fifty dollars an ounce, maybe more. Yes. So I, I, I so. I'm, I'm with you. So we're kind of like in the potentially the hot potato. Um, version of this game out here. So I don't know whether the... Now, look, the TD9 count, Shimano Gold, uh, typically responds well to those TD9 counts. So, for example, uh, here on this white background daily chart, there was a TD9 count high November 16th. There was a TD9 count low December the uh, 2nd. Um, there was another TD9 count out here on uh, December 28th that took price back to its breakout level. Uh, so the TD9 counts are something to be respected, but that high could form a bars eight, bar nine, that'd be tomorrow, or on Monday, the bar following bar number nine. Um, so if it were not um, relate, you know, Ukraine oriented out here, then I'd be absolutely saying, hey, you got to prepare at least for a short term pullback. And then maybe on that pullback, you could get back into your trading position out here. Uh, the monthly, right. uh, the weekly, the weekly pro, the, the weekly charts look good, very positive with price trading above the top of the weekly profile. But it's only Thursday. We need to see where it closes tomorrow. And on a monthly time frame chart here, we're up above the oscillator and change line, something we haven't seen since uh, May of 2021 out there. So that is suggesting on a monthly basis, a close about 456 gets us to that 510 and above 510, 606. Is there is there something else that I can provide you with or any information here, anything that you're looking at to uh, that I should investigate? Well, I, I think I was looking at the same things you were looking at. So uh, I, I was contemplating selling some calls against my core position. Uh, I'm trying to figure out if that should be a strike price of six dollars or or higher. So uh, uh, that's what I'm struggling with right now, and to decide whether or not to sell the options and hold this longer term, or just just ride it without the options. So, so sure. So let's help. let's yeah let's let's do this here too. Maybe just to try to assist both of us with just understanding what the mining equities are doing, and that's really taking a look at uh, Goldilocks. So I'm going to just switch uh, chart panels out here. We're going to go to our eight panel set of charts, multi time frame charts. Just see if there's any other kind of cautionary signals out here. And as we put these up on our screen, the only cautionary signal here is from the five hour and the four hour time frame charts, both of which are going to form bar number eight at uh, 2 p.m., so another 25 minutes. And then at the end of the day, we'll have bar number nine uh, for those. But other than that, I don't see any kind of a topping signal. Um, you know, And I, I guess neither of us 
have the crystal ball to determine what's going to take place in Ukraine, but it just seems doubtful that it's going to end today at four o'clock or something like that. Um, right. You know, and so it just seems like it just seems like gold's going to continue to move higher. And it's going to, and, and actually gold, if you take a look at what gold did here on the daily time frame, it negated the TD9 count pattern that just formed a couple of days ago. Let me just pull this chart back just a bit. So here was that TD9 count that was on December, on February the 15th. And we just had a one day hiccup, you know, it was a little bit of a burp. And this is a suggestion, technically speaking, and that's what you asked for. This suggests a strong momentum move to the upside on the uh, daily time frame for uh, gold out here. So it really does look like it wants to move higher. Right. Well, as usual, you're a big help. I appreciate it. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, glad to be of a uh, help. And uh, best of luck. And thanks so much for calling, Ray. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. You, you bet. Um, so let's go to a couple of our other requests out here. Uh, I'm going to change screen. So give me a moment just to get this set up. We'll go back to our black background screens out here. And uh, let me get uh, positioned. Uh, oh, Tom. Tom G. wrote in. So Tom is trading the uh, the SMHs both to the uh, long and the short side out here. And he says he's having a blast. So uh, the SMHs are are really interesting when we take a look at them. So let me just do and what I mean by that is, for example, the swing point out here is December, as January 28th. Volume there is uh, 10.9 million shares. A couple of days ago, this is on the 14th, on Monday, price pulls back with 7.7 .7 million shares, tests and rejects that. What does that say? That says you should move higher out here. You should head higher. Well, what price did the very next day is it ran right up to the swing point. The, the, swing, well, the swing point, oh, I, whoa, this, I have the wrong swing point out here. Give me a moment, Stevie. Give me a moment here. Sorry about that. Apparently, I wasn't paying attention. Um, let me get the yellow line out here. We like to be accurate when we uh, share information with you. Uh, and if we're not, it's uh, definitely not intentional. That's for sure. So the swing point out here, and I had the wrong volume metric, 278.30. But the volume on that was 8.3 million shares. And when price got into it, this is uh, was 6.4 million shares on the 15th. Yesterday closed back in it with 5 million shares. So, you know, typically you get inside a swing point on lighter volume. It can go test the high. doesn't guarantee that it will. But Tom is back to the short side. Now, Tom, the interesting thing is, is that the swing point that formed on February 14th, Valentine's Day, 7.7 .7 million shares. That's been tested so far, the high, 270.66, your 271, your lighter volume, or it appears that you'll be lighter volume. I don't know that for sure till we see the end of the day. Again, your benchmark is 7.8 million shares. You're about 5 million shares right now, so it'll be close. But uh, if it's going to reject this price, then it says you had to higher ground. But look at those descending and rising trend lines out here. You're moving into the get smart cone of silence. So, you know, I think you got to pay attention to the short-term time frame charts. We get back from this break, I'll put one of those up on the screen for you. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Directions Daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're uh, taking a deep, deep dive into the uh, SMHs out here, the semiconductor ETF, and this is a ten-minute time frame chart here that I've um, that we've got up on our screen. And the reason I chose a ten-minute time frame chart, I was going through several intraday time frames, looking for which ones might be providing the best signals for Tom out here. And you've got some nice roads, momentum indicator bottoms and tops, TD nine counts out here. And so the question that I had in my mind before I went to the black background charts is this is setting up a small A to B equals C D to the upside that might take price up to the 276 level out here. I don't know the answer to that just yet, but when I, uh, or we don't, but when I put up my black background chart, I can also see that price is trading right into a descending trend line. So a level to be watching out here, Tom, to the downside. So it looks like right now price should find support right here. Now, this is a 10-minute time frame chart. If it doesn't, price will go target the 270 level and below that, um, you know, may get all the way back down into the uh, swing point from uh, – uh, from uh, 2 o'clock on Valentine's Day out there. But it just from the daily set of charts out here, looks like this may become a little bit more difficult to trade um, just simply because we're dealing with that descending trend line, that uh, rising trend line, and I don't know which one is going to uh, eventually get uh, broken out here. So I do hope that that helps you out with regard to SMHs. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. The next question coming in uh, is from John. And this is uh, John uh, near Cool in Cloudy Green Bay, Wisconsin. Bless your heart. Um, what does cool mean in Green Bay? Because uh, cool could be uh, 30 degrees. Maybe that would be cold. But either way, what uh, John wants to take a look at is I uh, need your take on Roku, please. I own 50 shares. You just bought this morning at 150. So let's get Roku up on our screen out here while we read the question. R-O-K-U R -O -K -U is the ticker symbol. It would be helpful. Oh. Man, Stevie's having a tough time spelling today. Let's try this again. Roku. Uh, R-O-K-U. Okay, we got it. So you purchase uh, so you purchase this at 150. It's trading right now at 149. It's uh, trading below a rising trend line. It's trading into a swing point that has volume of 9.8 million shares. You're with it with 4.4. So this looks to me, so you you're, you're potentially at support. When I, what I mean by that is the bottom of the daily profile is 149.67. You're at 149.08. So you're potentially at support. If it closes below that this week and the swing point that it's dealing with was just from four weeks ago, that had volume out here on the weekly basis of 30 million. You're only into it with 15 million. I mean, theoretically, Roku should be able to hold this area, 143.49, the bottom of that daily profile. Let's pull over the white background charts, though. And your question specifically was... I sell them hold through earnings. 
tonight, but I really think this baby could pop top side. Nice high volume high from January 20th. So, uh, you know, we're looking what we're looking for here then is some kind of uh, some kind of tell. And I don't have the tell. What we do have is we have a Rogemontum indicator bottom that formed on the 24th of January. And basically since then, it's been in a sideways consolidation. Uh, with the top of the consolidation being its TD9 count breakdown level 179.68. Does this give me a clue as to what it wants to do or whether it wants to pop or not? Not not necessarily out there. So, I, you know, that's your instinct. Um, prices below the uh, weekly red oscillator and change line. Uh, again, we talked about how it's testing the bottom of that uh, price would need to close above 172.45, maybe after earnings. That's what it does. And that gets back to its merry bullish ways out here. But that's not the signal as of 146. So no tell there. The monthly chart says, hey, Stevie, I've got a TD9 count uh, top and I'd like to go test my breakout level of 100.19. So you bought it today is what you said. You bought it this morning playing that um, uh, playing that long pop out there. Uh, I just don't have the signals to suggest that, uh, that that's what the outcome is going to be. That doesn't mean it's not what the outcome is going to be. You're, you're asking me for some kind of tell out here. And other than the roads momentum indicator bottom that's led to a consolidation, I just don't have anything else. So, John, thanks much for writing in. Glad that it's uh, cool out there in Wisconsin. And um, and uh, best of luck to you in this trade. LC writes in, and L wants, uh, I was uh, able to buy some Junior Nugget recently. Do you see Junior Nugget testing 83 in the near term? So J-N-U-G is the ticker symbol. So let's go see what it is uh, doing. Let me get that going on my, uh, my other chart as well. So you've got uh, the Junior Nugget taking on a swing point from back on the trading day of January 20th. It did volume there of 1.2 million. You're at 1.1 already today. So that looks pretty good. Um, you know, in that it's, it, but what you'd like to see is a close above the top of that swing point. So you're looking today, uh, LC, for a close above 6804. Does it have to close above 6804 today? Doesn't have to, but you'd sure like to see that with the volume as it takes on that uh, swing point. If it doesn't, this could be nothing more than a good old fashioned consolidation out here. Could be. Let's see what the, uh, oh, it didn't, uh, oh, here it is, Junior Nugget. So the Junior Nugget is going to also, though not unusual, so we looked at Yamana Gold, uh, the Junior Nugget is going to form bar number nine of a TD9 count today. So your specific question was, do I see it testing 83 bucks? 82.20 would be its next daily target to the upside if price is able to close above that swing point from January 20th of 68.04. However, you've got the cautionary sign of a TD9 count. Now, it could be tomorrow's high, that sets the hook for that top. It may not set the hook for the top. It may act like Goldilocks did, which was a TD9 count top, a one-day burp, and then a second-day uh, smorgasbord to the upside. So it is. It, when we get to the mining equities, I just posed the question to you, LC, that I had posed to Ray, which is how much of this move is a result of what's going on over in Ukraine versus something else. Now, that's something else that most people will think of is inflation or a fall in U.S. dollar or something along those lines. I hearken to say that's a bunch of BS before Steve shared with you other information. What you really need to know, what you really want to be paying attention to, at least with regard to Goldilocks, you know, is how is Goldilocks trading in all the major currencies? Is it moving higher in all of the major currencies? Well, when we take a look at gold price in dollars, the answer is yes. Euros, yes. Pounds, yes. And yen, yes. So you've got a good old rally that is out here. I think that rally comes to an end if there is some type of uh, positive outcome uh, over over in uh, in Ukraine. I don't see that positive outcome taking place this afternoon, but anything could happen or tomorrow out there. So, you know, I, I think you stay with the trade, but you just have to be cautious. Be cautious means have some kind of stop in place, knowing that you're coming into a prior swing point, even though with volume, you've got the TD9 count top out there. So, LC, I do hope that that helps you. And then, of course, you said if you have time, could you also look at, you've got two other requests out here, and uh, get to one of them. 
for sure. Let's take a look at this. this is APPS. Let's put that up on the screen and let's go see what this even is. And I'm just going to use the black background screens out here. And uh, this is formed a brand new profile today. And so your support and resistance levels, uh, support is going to be at 4437, resistance at 5317. You have a new weekly profile that formed last week. Support is 3905. Resistance at 6702. You can see that descending trend line so far. That's holding as resistance out there. That is Digital Tribune. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Just to finish off APPS, uh, this formed a Gartley buy pattern. That was yesterday when it was confirmed with that gap to the downside. But uh, what price did also yesterday was it pulled back into tested support. That's the oscillator and change line. So right now that's printed at 46.53. Uh, so use that as a uh, guideline. If price is able to hold that level, then uh, a key level of support will have held. And maybe this is going to go try to target the 63.77 level. If it doesn't hold there, then 44.37 is the area for you to uh, watch. That's coming from the daily time frame. So 
So, Elsie, I hope that helps you out with regard to those two instruments. We have other requests that have come in. Michael P. wants to take a look at NVIDIA. So, Michael, I'm not going to read the question out here. Uh, your, well, your question is, do I see it breaking 200? So as we take a look at NVIDIA, what it's done right now is this is pulled back to test that red oscillator and change line. We're printing out at 245. The red oscillator and change line is 245. So I close below this area where we're at. Would then suggest that price should or could find support between 215 and 227. That is a bullish structured profile. So your specific question is, do I see it breaking 200? My answer at this stage of the game is I do not. And right now, price is at support. So watch, uh, you know, continue to watch this throughout the day. But you've just got to pull back inside of NVIDIA to a uh, level of support. That's the oscillator and change line. Next question, kind of from Hector. And Hector wants to take a look at the energy sector, the XLE. And uh, Hector, on a weekly basis, what he's interested in. So we just have a few seconds. Let me uh, get over to the weekly chart here for uh, the energy sector. And as we take a look at it, it uh, still looks good. Now, weekly, on a weekly basis, depending on how the week ends, you do have a bear sash candle right now. That would confirm a road momentum indicator top. And that would suggest a pullback to 65.10 or thereabouts. That's the green oscillator and change line. So even if we get a weekly bearish reversal candle with price above the top of the weekly profile and a oscillator and change line, it's really a neutral signal. Now, neutral signal that says, hey, prepare for retracement back to the 65.10 level. So I do hope that helps you out. Everybody, thanks so much for writing in, for the questions, for being here. Tomorrow morning, we're going to record the show from 8 to 9. So send me an email at steve at tfn.com, but certainly join us bright and early. Have a terrific Thursday, folks. We'll see you on Fantastic Friday.